Size matters very greatly. China now accounts for about 10% of world GDP in market exchange terms. If you take PPP-based measures, China accounts for about 15% of world GDP and accounted for about a quarter of world growth last year. And China now accounts for about 10% of world trade. Pretty staggering numbers if you think about it one way. But the size dimension turns out to be important but not crucial. After all, if you think about an economy like Switzerland, it's hardly a world juggernaut in terms of size. But the Swiss franc still plays a fairly important role. Why? We'll get to that in a second. The second issue is related to flexible exchange rates. Typically, reserve currencies tend to have market-determined and flexible exchange rates. Again, this used to be the old wisdom, but if you look at what's happening with the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc, it's not that obvious anymore. But still, exchange rate flexibility clearly is an important criterion. And so is capital account convertibility, where, as I said, China is making progress. Macroeconomic policy is another important dimension because ultimately one wants to have a currency that one can believe in. And having um, high levels of public debt um, or central banks that are not that concerned about inflation could lead to concerns about the erosion in the value of the currency. And that's not good for a reserve currency. And here again, the world has become a more complex place. If you think about countries in the West, the US, the European Union, these can hardly be seen to be the paragons of macroeconomic stability. It hasn't hurt, it, hurt their reserve currency status yet, but it's a dubious issue. And on these fronts, actually, China doesn't do that badly. The explicit level of public debt is not that high. Inflation volatility is actually not that far out of line with the advanced economies. So in macroeconomic policies, China doesn't seem to be um, uh, that held back in terms of getting its currency to be a reserve currency. Then we come to the critical issue, which is financial market development. And this is an issue which ultimately seems to swing the balance. Going back to the Swiss franc, one reason why the Swiss franc is a reserve currency is because Swiss financial markets are deep. And this is where China needs to make enormous progress still. This is an issue on which people like Nick Lardy have written. There is a very large reform agenda on the financial market development that I think is going to be critical. And once one starts thinking about it this way, it's a matter not just of the internationalization or the reserve currency status of the renminbi, but China's own economic stability that really matters.